Hello, it's Katie Colson here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to do a reading vlog for my May book club pick for the Smut Salon on Patreon, which is my book club. So this month we are reading Any Man by Amber Tamblin. So this is a book that I had never heard of before until I saw Gabby read it about four months ago. And she said that she absolutely loved it. And then when I was hearing more and more people asking on Patreon to read it, I was like, this okay like you know what I like the cover it's pretty short and I must have heard what it was about when Gabby spoke about it in her video but I did not remember I know that in the beginning of this video in the vlog portion I say that I do not remember what this book is about I do not suggest that I really do not there are so many books that I would suggest going in blind not with this okay and that is not the intent of this book because the summary tells you exactly what's going on it tells you the triggering content like there's no question about it this is more literary fiction where it's not about twists and turns you know what happened you know what's happening you know it's going to happen you just don't know how the world is going to react and how the characters are going to deal with what happened and is happening and going to happen that was very convoluted what i'll say this is an insanely triggering book when I tell you this is like 270 pages, the audiobook is four hours and it took me from 7 p.m. until 5 a.m. to read it because I had to keep setting it down and walking away. Now, that being said, speaking of the audiobook, uh, the audiobook is really good, but I would suggest buying the physical book and physically reading it because it's poetry. This book is a mix of prose and poetry and physically reading it in my experience is the better option. But long story short, this is about a series of violent, horrifically violent sexual assaults that happen towards men by a woman who goes by the name of Maud. And we don't know what she looks like. We don't know who she is. And she doesn't care what the men look like, what their age is, what their nationality is, where they are. It doesn't matter. She, it's just that they're men. And basically what Amber Tamblyn does in this book is flips the script of sexual assault as a society, as a media, as a law, and just as a perception of gender equality, because we are getting the perspective of multiple men who this has happened to, and all of them are vastly different character wise. So you're seeing how different people in different walks of life in like a conservative, a liberal, like a Democrat, a Republican, all these different things, how they would react to this happening, and how they they maybe don't or do push past their own um, ideals to help support other men. So this is a very powerful book. I will tell you this is insanely triggering. If you do not know if you can handle it, I don't know if I would pick it up. Um, I had a lot of moments in this where I had to walk away because there was something that I just related to so much and I just could not read on and I had to go take a breather and come back and do something else. And I will tell you that while this is literary fiction and there isn't really any spoilers, because again, the summary tells you exactly how it ends and how it begins, but I do read a lot of quotes out of this. So if you don't want to hear those, then maybe go and pick up this book first before you watch this video. But all that being said, let's get right into the video. We all know that you guys are here for the kitchen cabinet, okay? We all know, let's not act surprised. I am gonna start Any Man by Amber Tamlin. I bought the audiobook, even though it's only four hours long, because this is just what I need right now. This is just what I need right now. I'm gonna just listen to it all in one go. It is currently 7, like 30-ish in the evening. I have not done anything today and I don't just mean like oh my god I just did like a couple like this or that no I mean seriously I've done literally nothing and I woke up at 8 30 a.m because you know listen I, it's a you know it's a common affliction I'm not here to act like I'm the only one but we're going through it we the the royal we are not having a good time in life right now my dude we have the big ick and it sucks Anyway, I'm going to read this. This is my Patreon Smut Salon buddy read for the month of May. And it is very close to the end of May. I want to say it's the 29th. And I still haven't read this because I haven't been able to read anything. I'm on my patrons. No, 
Okay, so it's only four hours. I heard the audiobook is amazing. Um, where is it? This was gifted to me by one of my patrons, Sage, who I love your name. It's uh, Sage K. Yeah, I'm gonna start reading this and maybe I'll hit you up like every 30 minutes because it's only four hours long. I don't know. Let's just get to reading. What's in this book? What's in this book? Because it's criminal. It's criminal. It's like equally so powerful. I can't look away and so triggering that I can't stomach it. I've only read 35 pages. And when I tell you that if the next page said the end, this would get five stars. It would get five stars. So much has been said and conveyed in these 35 pages. A lot of which, again, literally have barely nothing written on them. But because... I didn't realize, I don't know if Amber Tamblyn is a poet or she looks like she does some poetry on the side, but it shows because, oh my God, I'm not a poetry girl. So like I'm coming at this with like no experience and not really any experience reading it. I've read like a couple poetry collections and none recently. You know, I can't really speak on the poetry part as in terms of like if it's good poetry, but to me, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I did not know what this was about. I do not suggest going into it not knowing what it's about. I'll say that. We begin the story with Donald kind of coming to and being, not greeted, but someone coming up to him after he has been brutally sexually assaulted um, by a woman. And the absolute trauma that he goes through from this and the things that are said to him by strangers, by his wife, by police officers, by hospital employees. Nothing bad yet, though I'm, I know it is coming, but the way that he thinks about it is just, it's so gut-wrenching. And when I tell you, this is triggering content. Yeah, we haven't gotten like descriptions of the sexual assault because that is not necessary, but the way that he's thinking about it is very triggering because one, you can put your, you are in his head. You can put yourself in your head of this just having happened to you. And if God forbid this has happened to you, you are going to relate in a way that you might not want to. But what it seems is that Amber Tamblyn is saying, like putting a man as the main character to maybe reach a wider audience to be like, this is a big deal. And I want you to imagine as a male audience, I want you to imagine this happening to you and maybe understand why we as female presenting people are so scared all the time. And that reminds me of a quote that I heard that I've never forgotten that I heard a woman say one time. And she said, men are afraid that women will laugh at them. Women are afraid men will kill them. And I was like, yeah. That is true, but that's not always the case. It's not always men, you know? So that is a really interesting part of this. But like, okay, this, when he first wakes up, yes, I am still breathing. No, I am not living. And he goes about like answer, like these are all the questions that he's being asked, but you don't get the questions, you only get the answers that he's giving, but you can tell what's being asked. And just a couple things I quoted was, yes, I had some drinks. And I was like, oh no, oh my God, like, don't ask him that. Fuck. Okay. And then, yes, I feel alone. Yes, everything is on fire. No, I don't want you to put it out. Yes, I'm married. Camilla, 15 years. No, please don't call her. Don't tell her. No, I don't want her to see me like this. Yes, I do. Very much. Yes, I would like to cry now. Yes, I understand. Yes, I am scared. Yes, I can still feel the pain. No, please don't tell anyone. No, I'm not ready. What the? Okay, and then later, okay, this one gutted me. I literally, when I tell you, so I had to put the audiobook down, put the book down, and then that's when I was putting this stuff up on the wall because I need to take a breather and I was listening to Taylor Swift because. Stop. And I'll show you that in a second. But whew, he thinks, I do not tell her that I tried to stop it because I can't remember if I did. It's 
she should leave me. I do not ask her if she's going to. I would understand if she did. I want her to loathe the man who could let this happen to himself, to have no pity, to tell me this is what I deserve. I, I know that a big thing about um, reading in the recent years is people saying like, you know, we don't need um, a bunch of essay in books, uh, like it's overdone and it's just for pain or whatever. Um, I do not at all agree with that stance with this book. I think this, as again, I'm only 35 pages. I swear to God, this better be an amazing book. But so far, this needed to be written and it is written in such a stunning and beautiful way. And I cannot wait to see what else is going to happen while I'm also peeking through my fingers because I'm terrified. <sighs> I'm shaking in my boots. I'm shaking in my boots. Like, but I do want to tell you, please go into this cautiously. Please, please, please. This is really, 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 really triggering, but it's fantastic. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this tonight, but I am going to get back to reading. Let me real quick though, show you what I ended up getting done. So I put the bunny um, images or the, I don't know, book covers, the reminted book covers that Mel made. Aren't they freaking stunning? I'm obsessed. And then I got these two moths at um, Joanne's. And then this was sent to me so long ago and I freaking love it. It's a tarot card of the lovers and it's Morticia and Gomez Adams. And I'm literally obsessed. So that's looking pretty damn good. It's been sitting right here for weeks and I've been meaning to put it up and just not doing it, not knowing how. Um, but then I needed a project. So this is what has come from this book. So the book is good and it's making me do good things, but making me think bad thoughts. That's the wrap up. Okay, let's get back to reading. Four is an evil number. Have I told you yet? The letter from Jimmy, his student. Is this what y'all are talking about with poetry? Where she barely has to write anything and I feel everything. I, I just started sobbing in my kitchen. I just started sobbing in my kitchen thinking about this boy. Just, mm, God damn it. I took a breather. Clearly I haven't cleaned my freaking face. But now I'm gonna keep reading while I, I try to mop, but I get a few sweet or mops in, whatever, swipes in, and I have to stop and look at this book. Anyway, okay, I'm on page 92, and I wanna let you know that it's midnight. I started this book at seven o'clock. That was five hours ago. 
and this is a four hour audiobook and I'm not even halfway through it because this is a book I want you to hear me this is a book you cannot swallow whole it is not possible and if it is possible for you I need you to sit with these pages a little bit longer okay so it says that a violent serial R word who goes by the name Maud is on the loose. She hunts for men at bars and online. The place doesn't matter, neither does the man. Her victims then must grapple with the aftermath of their assault, doubts from the police, feelings of shame and alienation from their friends and family, and the haunting of a horrible woman who becomes the phantom on which society projects its greatest fears, fascinations, and even misogyny. All the while, the police are without leads and the media hounds the victims, publicly dissecting the details of their past. As the years pass, these men learn to heal by banding together and finding a space to raise their voices. Told in alternating viewpoints, signature to each voice and experience of the victim, these pages crackle with emotion ranging from horror to breathtaking empathy. This summary, as far as I am right now, makes it sound like this woman is not going to be caught. I don't know if she is, but this does tell you that it happens to multiple men and it doesn't, they're all from varying walks of life, varying ages, varying looks and like cultures and um, money situations and everything. So this also tells you that it is violent. And that is something that was something I wasn't saying earlier that is very triggering is that these are violent assaults. The man, Donald, in the beginning, he has to wear a catheter because like he can't stand straight after what she did to him and the it's just it's horrible it's horrifying and I really like the way we're getting a lot of different perspectives in this book of like Donald is a children's English teacher and he is very compassionate and loving and empathetic and the way that he's talking about this situation is he doesn't want to talk about it and he's very closed off and when he when uh person comes to him a news reporter and is like I want to put you on the news and talk about what happened to you oh my god this is so crazy he's like I don't want to talk about that I would rather talk about how it is so difficult and rare for men to come forward about sexual assault and also about how women are rarely believed uh, I want to talk about that and the news doesn't want to hear about that and that's very interesting and then we have this man he's very gruff he's an older man he's 65 I believe and he's a stand-up comedian who does it? I mean, he's a stand up comedian who's not doing well at it, um, down on his luck. And the way that he goes about talking about this is with humor, and it's with very dark, gruff humor of a kind of southern man. And what I think is interesting about that is that while he is saying things that are offensive um, and crass, he also cares about these men, and he is hurting so much. Uh, but the way that he's getting it out is through this comedy and darkness. Pear is going through diary entries and he's talking about going to group therapy because these men, as far as I know, Jamar and Pete have found each other. And I don't know if Donald has, but through this support group for men who have been sexually assaulted. He's quoting what he said at group, I'm guessing. I guess I want to say, I want to say to the new guys here, look. It's okay to process your shit however you want to. It's your shit. It's no one else's shit. As long as you're not hurting someone else, your hell is yours and you get to decide, okay? You get to decide when you're ready. It's important that I say this though. It's not your fault. Whatever happened to you, it's not your fault. But healing your own pain does belong to you now. When we become aware, we become responsible. That... <sighs> That was deep. This was actually funny. So when I say he's a comedian, this is so funny. He's talking about the way that Maude, like he's describing Maude in his mind, like in the way that his mind portrays her. And he goes on and on, like ripping her apart. But two things he says about her that were so fucking funny are he calls her Ann Coulter with the face of Ann Coulter without makeup on. Ann Coulter with the face of Ann Coulter. I'm crying. And then Princess and the fucking penis mod. That's hysterical. But then this. This is what I wanted to stop and say to you, talk to you about, okay? Is that he's talking about he gets up to, he wants to get up and talk at group therapy, but he can't. 
and he usually does because he's very verbose he's very outspoken but he says some weeks are worse than others some weeks i can stand on my own two feet some weeks i am reborn without legs like getting out of bed and standing was never even in my repertoire this is poetry this is poetry and then he says that somebody shares a quote that he really resonates with about anger and how anger is despair and isolation and what he writes down, because he says that he cannot get up and speak, and he shares a moment in these letters where he's actually getting to the heart of his emotions. And he says, I know despair, known it for years. I've introduced it to my family and spent holidays with it. I argue with it about how to load the dishwasher. I go for long walks at dusk and let it spew its foul thoughts in my ears. I take it to the doctor when it's not feeling well. I ride home with it after every show I do, especially the good ones. That's when despair really likes to be there for me, to remind me it was just a fluke. I thank despair for keeping me honest, for never lying to me. I take it to my place and offer it a nightcap. I fuck it to feel better. I wake up a bitter man. Like, I'm... I am. Um, <laughs> what are we doing in the world where these things are so common and nobody wants to talk about it for real or stop anything from happening? Nobody wants to do jack shit for the people who are being hurt. That is my solo coming to you in a Christmas album soon. Um, we're not even near Christmas. It's literally not even June yet. Okay. We're feeling a lot of emotions. We're on page 92. I'm going to read more and then I will get back to you. Okay. Bye. It is four something AM. And remember when I said I wasn't going to finish this book today because I couldn't, well, I couldn't not. I, I kept trying to switch to a YouTube video to be like, you just need to calm down. You just need to unwind. No, I needed to know. I needed to know. I have to talk about it tomorrow because aforementioned it's 4 a.m. And listen, am I in my period? Yes. Am I going through a hard time in my life right now? Yes. But did I cry like a dozen times in this book oh affirmative affirmative i did uh five stars literally a glowing five stars this book is poetry this book is literary poetry it's so fucking good i but it's like i can't recommend it to people because it was so hard to read but like in a in the best way if that makes sense like it was, it's so good. It's so good. But I would not tell somebody to read this that could not handle it. And I clearly barely handled it while I was reading it. So, you know, take that with what you will. But I'm gonna, okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go because I'm a mess. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you tomorrow, I hope. Like the vending machine full of panties, and then it showed how they were made, and it was just like this random guy just like doing aerobics in underwear. <laughs> but they think they're getting like these cute girls. Mm. It's so men are so stupid. The weakest link, really. The weakest link. <laughs> the weakest oh, that's link. a great transition. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> if you've been here for the first twenty-eight minutes, <laughs> we're we're uh, segueing from misandry into. <laughs> Yes. I'm so curious to know what you rated it. Okay. I think I gave it four stars. Okay. I really liked it. What did you give it? I gave it five stars and it's one of the best books that I, it's probably, if it's Whoa. not the best book I've read this year, it's the second best. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, what's the first? Alone with you in the ether by Olivia Blake. I need to read that. I need to read that. I okay. feel the opposite, the opposite where I read this and it was incredibly triggering, like incredibly yeah. triggering. But I felt like it deserved a really amazing rating because of how much she nailed it, like mm. nailed the things mm. that people that people think and the reasons they don't tell anyone and like all yeah. this stuff. And I was like, I was like, yeah, she is going to make this, especially if, if men read this, that this has never happened to, it will be more aware of what actually happens in yeah. these situations. So yeah. 
I thought that was, and I thought it was really important. Like I just yeah. thought it was really important. They don't care about us. People who live through sexual assault are crash on the side of the road, and the American media is nothing than is nothing more than the car slowing down just long enough to take a peek, just long enough to take a picture before speeding off to their next uh, fatality. We are a country that capitalizes on fetishing on fetishizing of felonies. A country that says innocent until proven guilty, even though um, the providing of assault is nearly impossible. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one where it's like, how do you prove between being hit on and being hunted? Yes. How the fuck do you know that? I literally like read it and then you said it. Because I, this book, oh my God, it's so fucking good. Like I adored it so much. Y'all, this book, this broke me, this remade me, this made me stronger. I have been talking about this book to anyone with or without ears or brains or eyes or even sentience. I've been speaking to everybody about this book. I've been shoving this book down all of my coworkers' throats. I'm like, I need it for my book club. I need to hold it up for my book club when we discuss it and go over the quotes. Uh, but after that, you're all reading it. I've already got three people in line. I'm like, you're reading it. It'll take you one day. I promise you. Oh my God. If you want to annotate in the book, be free to do so. I would freaking love that. Speaking of annotations, let me tell you what they mean. So, I mean, it's stunning. It's stunning. So I have this like neon pinky color for the system or society in general is so effed when it comes to essaying. And then coral for, this is poetry. Like this is actually poetry. Amber Tamlin. <laughs> Hello. And then I have this kind of translucent pinky color for trauma or for something that I found so relatable in terms of trauma or grief. And then mauve is for things that I teared up or actually cried when I read them. And then gray, the last one is for like F yeah, sorry, F yeah sounds so weird. Fuck yeah is what I mean. Um, or fighting the stigmas. So basically parts where men put aside their either misogyny or manly pride or things that men are suspect are expected to do as a society to either empower or support other men or to empower and support women in the um, subject of essaying and trying to bring it to light, which I thought was absolutely amazing in this book. So I finished the last half of this and it touched me. It broke me. I just, oh my God, it's so sad. It's so beautiful. It's heartbreaking. This is absolutely going to be in my top five of 2023 of best books of the year. I love that so many of my book club books have been five stars and are basically the only five stars that I've read this year. So we're knocking it out of the park. And a couple things I want to say about the second half of this book is that there is a kind of the view almost morning talk show where a bunch of women are coming on and a lot of them have different stances. And at first they're arguing about whether or not they agree or believe that men can be essayed but by the end they're all kind of agreeing and it's really disgusting especially seeing women do this and saying like it's not possible like how could a man ever be overpowered by a woman like it's not possible and you're listening to it as a woman like what are you doing like like these women are doing the same thing that men are doing to them like gaslighting them and gaslighting a society as a whole to say that their trauma doesn't matter and that they should just shut up and deal with it and it is really gross um that part i do really love the audiobook for because it is narrated by a cast of people and they talk over each other and they're laughing but the rest of the book i would suggest physically reading um personally but that happens that messed me up and then there's a moment where a character gets really really angry this man gets so angry and he destroys something that the town really loves and afterward, he feels so bad about it because he was like, I took this thing's life because I thought my life was taken from me and I was angry. And I'm like, wow, that's a really powerful statement because that is really true. Like hurt people hurt people. This moment though, I need to quote this. I need to tell you about this. I absolutely adore this, like wrote in it. I'm just obsessed. And there's a moment where these two men are at a bar and they are watching the news about Maude and these sexual assaults. And they're like, um, kind of trying to make jokes about it. And then the bell above the bar door jingles. I look over my shoulder to yell at Lewis, but it's a woman, alone. Jimmy changes the channel. I lock eyes with him in the mirror. I push my scotch away and take a sip of water instead. That is so powerful because that really flips the script of like how women will, even if they hate each other, they will like come together uh, to protect each other against violent or sketchy men. Like I can absolutely hate a girl, hate her 
literally cussing her out, hate her guts. But if we're at a bar and a sketchy dude is following her, I will stay by her all night, all night, all night. Because in those moments, it's like a gender wide trauma bond situation of us against them kind of thing where not in its entirety, but in those moments, we, we kind of have that innate um, protectiveness of each other because we want other people to do it for us as well. So that was really powerful in my opinion. There's an amazing moment where they go over the statistics of how difficult it is to go through the justice system and medical system after being essayed and how hard it is to go through the court and to be believed and how few people actually go about um, telling anyone that it actually happened. And that was really powerful to me because it's so true and it is something that society really needs to work on. And I thought this is really amazing. It says, um, protecting our kids, not just from predators, but also from a society and culture that feels kind of predatory, you know? I mean, that lady did the crimes, but we publicized it, we capitalized it, we exploited it for ratings. Yeah, yeah, you did. And then, okay, I swear, I swear, I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna stop quoting, but this, this got me. It says, I live in a country built on celebritizing its citizens' grief and amplifying stories of violence and assault for political gain, click counts, or television ratings. It's Pride Month, and when I tell you the amount of TikToks that I see of people like bashing big corporations for their Pride merch, hilarious to me, and that's exactly what they're doing. Okay, um, let me be emphatically clear. They don't care about us. People who live through sexual assault are a crash on the side of the road, and the American media is nothing more than cars slowly slowing down just long enough to take a peek, just long enough to take a picture before speeding off to their next fatality. A country that says innocent until proven guilty, even though the proving of assault is nearly impossible. Tell me how you prove coercion. How do you prove the dis difference between being hit on and being hunted? This, I could write a dissertation about this book. Somebody needs to, more people need to read this, more people need to make videos on it. I've been scouring the internet trying to find people reviewing this book on YouTube and there's like three people in total. Excuse me, like the, huh? Okay, I really love this. I love the way it ended. I love Donald, the, the guy that we meet in the beginning. He's my favorite character. Like I freaking love him. I also love Pear. It was just so good. I just loved it. It was just beautiful. I highly suggest it, five out of five stars top five favorite book of 2023, even though we're not even halfway through the year, I'm telling you, it's just, this cannot be, nothing's gonna beat this out of the top five. I'm just saying that. So if you've gotten this far into the video, you can leave the pink heart emoji with the little sparkles on it. I think that one's really cute. And this is obviously a cute little um, pink moment. So if you have read this, let me know down below and let me know if there was anything that you really got out of it, moments that really spoke to you. If you suggested it for other people, I would love to know. And if you're planning on picking this up, I highly suggest that you do so. Also, if you want to follow me on Patreon, you always could. The idea is out there. You don't have to. No pressure, but if you want to, the link is down below, as well as a link to my Goodreads and Instagram if you want to follow me on any other platforms. All of that being said, I hope you are all having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having in whatever part of the world you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye. Try to play, but you're never gonna beat me. Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy. Bloody ants stain from the people who deceive me. Muddy ants break through the chains, go free me. Looking for change, looking for pain. Pulling a mob, pushing a train. I'll never stop, stick to a lane. Pick up the pieces and go rearrange. Uh, I'll be the best.